Hey residents of Meeple Town, today we are looking at Great Barrier Reef where you're going to be taking cards from your hand, laying them out into your reef so that you can configure them in specific ways to gain the most points at the end of the game. So let's get to the table and check out Great Barrier Reef. All right, so here we are set up for a two player game. We have our uh, cards that we're going to be drafting or that we're going to be taking drawing here in just a little bit um, Up here are the scoring cards and these are going to give you your objectives to um, Playing your cards into your reef. So I'll just give you a couple of those examples One is if you have four in a block So if you have this type of fish in a block of four You're going to get the amount of points for each set of four that you have at the end of the game based on what this scoring marker is set on. So for example, if it's up here and I have uh, one, one block of four, I'm gonna get 16 points. It's kinda hard to see, I'll take some pictures of that, hopefully kinda zoom in there um, so it'll help you see it a little bit better. But we each start with three cards and we're going to be playing a card into our own personal reef. And so what I will do is take one of these cards and just place it into my reef. And now the rules for this say that you need to overlap, partially overlap these cards. Well, since it's your first one, you're not, uh, you're not going to be doing that. So, um, yeah, I think I'll do that. And then when I play this card, it's going to have a number on there. This one has a number four, which means I'm going to be looking at the number four fish here and drawing this card and taking this one into my hand and then refilling this and that will be my entire turn now the next player this we'll call this one john since he's not here so john is going to look at his cards and he's going to be looking at the number on here as well as the fish to kind of figure out okay which one would i like uh, john really likes the one over here so he's going to place this card into his reef and do it here so we got enough room to see it and then he'll draw the number one card put this off to the side, his cards off to the side, and then put a new card to refill this row. Next, I'm gonna take my cards, and again, I'm kinda of looking up here to see what I have here and what I have um, going on up here, as well as in my hand. So there's a lot to really think about in this game. Um, right now, I only have this fish present, that's a scoring fish, and I need to get three diagonal ones. Unfortunately, I don't have any good cards to be able to do that. And so I think what I'm going to do is look to the tableau and, uh, sorry, look to the cards up here and, and see, is there anything that's going to help me? Well, there are some of these fish where I can get four in a block that would be very helpful. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this card and, ooh, let's see. I'd like to play my two. That's fine. I'll play, I'll play this one. So... I will cover up this negative two point block on there. And notice I'm partially covering up the card. Now I can cover it here and cover it here. Now sometimes when you cover things up, it's actually going to trigger other things that will happen. I'll explain that in just a minute. But I uh, played my one there and then I drew my one card and refill that. And let's see, John's going to take his cards, look at them, and he thinks, all right, I would, John's kind of thinking, he's got these two fish out here, he's got this little clown fish, and that is going to give him points for four and an L, and he also has this fish, which again is the four and a block, so John's kind of thinking he would like to be able to do that, and so he'll, he'll go ahead and, and look at trying to get that L if he can, hmm. It's kind of a tricky one. So I think what he's going to do, he might just go ahead and block both of these to kind of set himself up to be able to get that. So that's going to be a four, which is the reason why he did, partially the reason he did that, because he really wanted this card. And so John's going to draw that card. Uh, as you can tell, turns are very quick, although it is a very thinky game. There's a lot to think about with the cards in your hand, with the cards in the tableau. Uh, in your in your reef and the cards up here that you're going to be drawing as well as how you're going to score those cards Well, right now I don't have a whole lot going on for me and so I think I'm going to try to go ahead and start getting four in a block now if I play this three that isn't really going to help me with what I need so I think what I'll do 
Uh, it's a little tricky here. I think I'm going to play this card here, which is going to cover up a shark. And when you cover up a shark, you're going to move up one of these score markers and then down on another one. Let me, let me show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna place that right there. And when you do that too, the sharks are gonna be worth two points at the end of the game. So that's something to really think about. Do I want to cover that up um, and lose those two points? But in doing so, you'll be able to move up on those markers. And so since that's kind of the direction I'm gonna go, I would like to move up on this one, which is the four in a block, and I'll move down on one. And so what I'm gonna do is look over and see what John's going for. John is going for those clownfish, and so I'm just going to move that one down there for him. The card I played was a star, which means I can draw any of these that I want to. Uh, none of those really help me for the block that I want, and so I'm going to kind of I want to look for some other uh, another one that I can go for, and one that really sticks out to me is the one that's three in a row. So if I get three fish in a row, I'll get I'll score this one. With this type of fish and so yeah i think i'll go i'll go for that so i will flip that over it's going to be john's turn john's got three cards to look at again john's going for those clownfish and that's what he's going to do he's just going to keep trying to go for those clownfish he's going to cover that one up right there and that's going to give him four which will set him up to be able to play that one next time to be able to get all those clownfish that he's going for and let's see back over to me and i am still going to be going for ooh, it's tricky still going for the four block unfortunately i don't really have great cards to do that i guess it's not terrible so i think what i'll do is play ooh, that's kind of a tough one so i will i will cover those up i'm gonna have to cover them up anyway and i'll take this four and now I, I'm one short of being able to get that four block there. Now, one thing you, you're always thinking about are the ones that you're covering up because you're only going to cover the ones that are showing. And so if I'm covering up fish constantly, well, I'm taking away opportunities to be able to score those fish in the future. All right, back over to John. John is, uh, he already knew what he was going to do, so he's going to go ahead and finish that one. So he will put that clownfish there. And he covered up a negative two spot, which is a negative two point um, uh, starfish there, which is good. He played his one card, so he'll draw that one. And let's see, back over to me. Still don't have the card that I need, and it's not out there yet. So I'm just going to start looking for something else. Again, I, went, I mentioned a little bit earlier that I could go for this three in a row here, which I think that's what I'll do. Yeah, I'll play this one to give me a three in a row. And, oh, no, that's not it. Here we go. That gives me two in a row, and so I just need one more, and I'll get my three card. And just as a reminder, these aren't final components, right? Um, the card art is, uh, these fish will be a little bit different than some other changes uh, to the game, and the Kickstarter campaign might, might change some of that as well with the cards that are available. Um, we we'll just have to wait to see how that plays out. All right, back over to John. John has that one complete, and he's kind of looking on here again and thinking, all right, what is another one that I can go for? Well, he's got this one, this yellow fish right here, and you get points for the yellow fish when you do a corner. So basically one, two, and then another one over here. And John actually has what he needs for that in his hand. So he's just going to cover up that spot right there. And... Let's see, ba, 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 ba. yeah, I'll take that, and then I'll take this one, and again, John's, uh, sorry, not John, me, I'll explain me. I'm always looking for a card that's going to have this color fish in the top left-hand corner because that's going to be what completes this one, and so far that one's worth 12 points and nothing else is worth higher than four, and so this is going to be my big moneymaker if I can keep it maybe getting sets of this and then driving that up. But again, I need to get the card that I need. So, uh, all right. And I will, ooh. I kind of hate to cover this one up because I've already got something going there. Um, but I need to, to be able to complete that. So I think that's what I'll do. I'm just going to cover that one up, which is going to, 
if the game ended right now, I'd get four points for this one for having three in a row. Um, but it's not over, and so I, it's potentially I could cover those up at some point down the road. Uh, there's the card that I need. So I'm, I'm thinking that in the back of my mind right now, not trying to give too much away to, uh, to what I have going on. Uh, back over to John. John just needs one more to do the corner piece. And the benefit, uh, there's a couple benefits of him doing this one. So one, that's going to give him the points. Also, it's going to cover up a negative two-point spot. On top of that, he's going to be covering up a sponge, which will allow him to move up in one of those things. And what John thinks that he's going to do is move up on the clownfish to get that one back up to six. So now this one's going to be worth six and play the three card. So I'll take that three <laughs> spot. And now John did that may or may not have known that he really messed me up and and what I was trying to accomplish. All right, we made a little more room so we can finish this up, play a little bit more of this game, maybe get a whole playthrough of it in. Um, so it is back over to me, and I'm a little unsure about what I want to do now. I think what I would like to do, though, is go ahead and start getting some of these blue fish, which I need three diagonal from each other. And I look here and I think, well, I've already got two right there. I can play this star card and that's going to allow me to take whichever pile I want. So I'll go ahead and take this one and put a new card out there back over to John. John is going to, let's see. Uh, John would like to get a shark, I know that. He'd like to be able to start moving up some of those point markers to be able to help him out a little bit. He's got a shark here. He's also working on maybe even moving up this clownfish one since he already has one set and he can get some points there. So I think what he'll do is he'll play this one, which is going to cover up a sponge, taking a point away, but he'll get to move up on one of the tracks. More importantly, he'll be able to put a shark out there and take from the one pile where there is another shark, but he has already moved up on this track from covering up the sponge. That was quite the turn for John to be able to start uh, maybe moving up and getting some more points here. Back over to me, and I think, wow, I'd like to get some of those clownfish if John's going to be moving up on that track. Um, so I'll go ahead and put a clownfish out there and cover up this negative two spots so that I can get points here. And i put a four. So I'll take the card from the four spot back over to John. John's just going to keep trying to get those clownfish out there while also... Um, Let's see, yeah, by also um, maybe covering up that shark and getting him some potentially some more points. So he'll be able to move up one on a track and then down on another track. So obviously he's going to move up on the clownfish track. Those are now worth 12 points if they stay. And he'll move down on a track, which he's got zero of those diagonal blue ones like I have. So he'll move that one down. And playing that card, he gets the four, which is going to give him another clownfish to be able to work with here soon. Back over to me. And I think I will um, start getting some clownfish out there. That might help me out some. If I play this two clownfish, that would be good. But then there's no clownfish here. Um, and there's not, that's not really a huge benefit for me right now. Now I could start. Um, continue working on uh, I'd really like that four too because again I need that to be able to get uh, what I need so I think what I'll do is go ahead and put this one here to cover up that negative two get this four and then I can get the, that gray fish that's going to be four in a block and that's kind of what I'm going for as well all right getting back over to John John is gonna keep clown fishing it up and <laughs> Yeah, might as well just go for this one. It's just going to cover up a one victory point there. I'll take this one card and back over to me. I will oh, give that to the wrong person. There we go. And there we go. I think I did that right. Uh, now this was actually supposed to go here. There we go. Okay. Um, a little difficult keeping up with two players. All right. Uh, I have this... Gray fish. Mm. I didn't really set myself up well here. I've got three in a row here, but then I really messed myself up by 
not, mm, I'm just gonna go ahead and cover that up anyway. I know that really hurts me, but I'd like to focus on this track here to get myself some points. So I'll take the one card and flip that one over, back over to John. John has a couple more things that he can be working towards, um, but he doesn't really have the cards that he needs yet. And so I think what he'll do is maybe just try to get some cards out there where he can move the tracks up and down. And so let's see. Yeah, what the hey, I'll put this one here. Yep, I'll put that one there. That's gonna be two. And, oh, not really the card that I need, but I'll take it anyway. Um, so that's two. Take this card, flip this one over, back over to me, and I'm going to, I don't really have a whole lot to work with either. Um, and I'd like to be able to move up and down on some of those tracks. So I think that's kind of be, gonna be my focus right now, at least for the immediate future, just so I can get some, I can get some things going here. So I think what I'll do is, yeah, go ahead and cover these two up here, not really benefiting myself with points or with fish there, uh, but I will, I did cover up negative two and I'm able to move up on one of these tracks. So I think I'll go ahead and move up on that gray one. The card I played was a three, so I'll take that. Flip this one over, really moving along here. And let's see, John's got a little more to work with here. Um, still not exactly what he wants, I guess, but uh, he can go ahead and start working on some clownfish again if he wants to. Uh, but I think that he's now looking at some of the cards out here that he really wants. And one of them that he knows that he really wants is going to be this three. So does he have a three? He does. And so he will just cover up, uh, not quite what he wants. Yeah, that's fine. He'll cover up that shark right there, moving up. Again, another one here, and then moving down on another track, and he'll just move down here. He's not really going for that one. He played the three card. It gives him the three spot there. Back over to me. I will do, what do I want to start working on? Again, moving up some of these tracks, but also I need to get points somehow. So I think what I'll do is uh, let's see if I can get, I don't have any of those either. Oh, this is just not great cards that I have here. So I'm just going to not really do much of anything. Maybe kind of set myself up for another turn, placing that. Let's see, I'll place this one here to cover up that negative two. And then hopefully that's a four card, which is what I'll need to be able to get points there. Flip this one over, back over to John and... Let's see, John again wants to be able to move up on some of these tracks. Uh, let's see. Um, I think what I'll do is, do I have any that will give me that point there? Not quite, hmm. Uh, yeah, maybe kind of set myself up for some turns in the future. Take that two there. And probably not playing the most optimal way, but uh, I'm just trying to give you an idea of how this is going to play out and also try to keep everything on the screen here. All right, so for me, I know that I need a I need this card right here, and I do have a one, so I will go ahead and try to block something here. Uh, there we go. I'll just put that there, which is going to cover up one. And I think I'll move up this one here because I've got a couple of possibilities of finishing those off. And uh, I'll take this one here and flip this over. Back over to John. And John is going to maybe, John would really like to get this block here. Uh... Not sure how that's going to play out, but oh well. I think I might just forego that, maybe try to get some more of these finished. There we go, that's what I was going to do. Uh, finishing that one, giving me the three. So as 
Dean is moving up on one of those tracks. It's also helping it, John. So we just got a couple more turns. I will use this one to fill in that right there, giving me, whoops, I need to do that. Um, covered up that so I'll be able to move up on one of these tracks. And I forgot, I'm actually needing to move up on this track. And that was my two card, so I'll get this, flip this over, and uh, John is, ooh, don't have a whole lot going on. I look over and I see that one's worth 20 points. I'd like to be able to complete that, but I'm not going to have enough turns. John's not going to have enough turns to do that. So he's just going to try to potentially uh, cover up. Yeah, here we go. He'll play this three here. And right now he's just thinking he would like to move up on a track. Now this flips over, so we're each going to have one more turn. We don't need to draw any more cards. I do have the card that I need to be able to complete this. It's going to give me a negative two-pointer here, but when I do that, I, can, I did cover that up, so I'm going to move up this. That's actually going to be maxed out now, and I did give myself one point. That is my last turn, back over to John, and John again would like to be able to move up his track as well by not giving himself too many negative points, and so what he'll do is cover up a negative two and the sponge to move up on one of the tracks, and that will he'll move up and max out the clownfish track, also giving himself a point there. That's going to be the end of John's turn. So now what we do is we are gonna add up all of the points. So with Dean's tableau over here, he's got a 24 point there, so that's gonna be 24. He does not have any of these completed, three in a row he did, but remember he covered it up, or I covered it up. Uh, I did get this one, so that's gonna be worth two points. Oh no, I covered that one up too. <laughs> not doing so well. I have two of these, these are each gonna be worth six points, so six and 12 plus 24, that's gonna be 36, and I have no clownfish. 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41. So that's 41 minus two, four, six, eight, 10. So it's gonna be 31 total points for Dean. I probably did something wrong there. I'll uh, hopefully go back and check that and, and see if I did. All right, over to John, you can't really see, but I do have a point over here on the far right side. So sorry, I got that off camera a little bit, but um, so for John, he has zero of that first one, which is probably going to hurt him a little bit. Then he does not have any of the second one either, none of the third one. He does have two of these completed. Each of those are worth six points, and that's going to be 12 points, plus two of these 19-pointers. So that's going to be 20, 38 plus, what did I say? That was 12, 38, that's going to be 50. And I'm um, going to count the points, so 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 54 points minus 2, 4, 6, I believe that's right, so that's going to be 48 to 31, I think is what I said. I may have missed some points in here now, now that I think about it. Um, that's okay, that gives you an idea how it, how it plays out. Again, this is a very quick game, the scores are pretty easy to keep up with, maybe not so with me because I'm doing two different players. But that gives you a gist of how the game plays out. Now let's, let's talk a little bit about the art and components. So uh, this is a prototype, and one thing you need to, know, need to know is these for sure are prototype. These are supposed to be, uh, these are going to look different. Um, I'm not sure about, uh, these I'm sure will be different. They're you know all kind of prototype material, but the art, the icons on the cards, I believe are all set and ready to go, which I think is a good thing because uh, one, I think it's a really pretty, vibrant, colorful game, uh, but at the same time, you can just look at your tableau and everything's very clear. The iconography is great. Um, what you need to do when you cover up cards is very clear. So that's a, a really big plus for me. Now let's talk a little bit about the gameplay. I think the gameplay is a lot of fun, but I want to stop there just a second to let you know that I do know the designer. Uh, we live in the same town, and so I want you to make sure that you take this part with a grain of salt. And um, I'll speak truthfully, but, but you don't have to listen to that piece knowing that I know the designer of this game. That being said, this is a filler type game, right? So this game takes about 20 to 30 minutes to play, especially with a two-player game. 
turns are really quick, which is a big plus for me. I think, you know, you're just taking a card, playing it into your reef, and then drawing a new card, and that's it. So your turns are going to be very quick. But that being said, because the gameplay is very simple and the, the, the actions are, are really quick and simple, uh, doesn't mean that this game doesn't have some thoughtfulness to it, because there are a lot of really interesting decisions that I like. I like when you place your card, um, oftentimes you're going to have to cover up pieces or cover up fish or cover up points or something, things that you don't want to cover up in order to gain more points from the things that you leave open. And I think those result in some interesting decisions. Also, when you play a card that has a, uh, when it has a number on it, you're drawing the card that matches that number. And so you have some interesting decisions there where you have to think about um, not necessarily playing the best card out of your hand. Sometimes you are, a lot of times you are, but you might be thinking, I really want to play this card just so that I can get this card that's in the tableau that's going to allow me to get some points later on. And so I think that's really interesting as well. And because of that, you have your own reef, but because you have to think about the cards that you're going to get from the tableau, the cards that you're going to draft, um, or from the, you know, from the, uh, the draw pile or whatever, because you have to think about that and because those decisions are important, that is where the uh, the player interaction comes into play. Now, I will say there's not a ton of player interaction because you're playing into your own reef. However, there is some hate drafting because you see what they're putting together and you think, wow, if they get that card, that's going to be a lot of points for them. And so you want to try to get those cards or you want to, um, you know, get the card that, that you need. So you have some decisions that need to be made there. Not super difficult decisions, but decisions as well. And because of that, there's some player interaction. Now, some of the negatives that I have for this is I want to see more variability from the scoring. So the, the cards that we're using, and I, I'm not sure exactly what's going to come out of the Kickstarter with this piece of it, so pay attention to that. There might be some other cards that come out, but but as is, every game you're going to be playing with the same scoring cards, and I think some of that can get kind of stale down the road. Now, you do have variability in which type of fish match up with the scoring cards, so that adds some of the variability there. Um, and if you're, you know, we played a two-player game, we removed 31 cards from, <laughs> from play, and so that's a lot of cards that didn't get into play. And so you have some variability with the cards that come out as well. But I can see the game kind of getting stale if you don't have enough variability that comes from those different options, different ways of scoring. But as is, I really like this game a lot. I think it's, uh, I think it is a filler, but it's one of the thinkier fillers that I've played. But it's not too thinky that it's going to push people out. I think because the decisions that you make are simple, they're quick, the game is very fast, but the puzzly nature, the thinkiness of it, really adds enough meat for me in a filler type of game that I want to play. So for me, I really enjoy this one quite a bit. We don't give final thoughts to preview games, but I did just want to jump in and give some of my um, initial thoughts from playing this. And now let's go over to John and see what he thinks. All right, so here are my thoughts on the gameplay of Great Barrier Reef. Here are the things that I like about the game. I like how you place the cards on, into your reef, um, not just like a lot of other tile placement games where you just place them orthogonally or maybe diagonally uh, adjacent to, the, to a particular card. In this game, I really like how you overlap the cards because it really leads to a lot of interesting calls over the course of the game. Because first of all, you have to overlap something. So sometimes you may have to overlap something good to maybe get something better. You may lose points because you were going to score some points, but you had to overlap it. Now you don't get those in-game scoring, which I like those calls, but you also want to overlap and cover up things that are going to give you negative points at the end of the game, which I think are really interesting. But you also may want to cover up something that manipulates the in-game scoring. And I think that that's really, really clever. I like the way that you're covering those up. So you may say, you know what, I'm going to forego this one um, extra point at the end of the game by covering it up, but I can move up um, the three diagonal scoring up a couple points by moving it up one um, notch on that. So I'm actually gaining points in the long run, especially if I have multiple of you know the diagonal scoring or whatever the scoring is. So I think that that is actually really, really neat. And I like that a lot about the game. I also like the way that you can manipulate the in-game scoring like I just talked about. I think it adds just something more interesting calls over the course of the game because uh, you're thinking through, okay, how do I want to cover this up? Do I want to place a card maybe just to 
uh, increase that because now I've got two or three of these things and I just want to keep uh, notching that up as much as I can because that my opponents don't have very many and I could win the game potentially by that. I think that's cool. Now some people might not like how you can turn them down as well. Like when you cover up the shark, you're gonna increase one, but you're also gonna decrease one. I like it because it would be kind of silly just to increase and not have decrease. But I will say I played my wife, we were playing one uh, the other night, the last game we were playing, I think. Um, we were playing and she was really going for one and I decreased it and she kind of gave me the stink eye. She didn't like that about it. So if you're really sensitive to things that might um, be like a tacky, it's not really. But if you're, if you're, if you're sensitive to that kind of stuff, maybe you wouldn't like uh, that part of the game. But the last thing that I really like in the game is the way that you're simply, when you place them in your tableau, it's got the number on there which tells you which card you're going to pick up, the one, two, three, or four. And I like that because you may even play stuff into your reef that you're not super excited about playing, but you really want the number four card. It has number four there, so I play that just to get that. I think that that's, uh, that that's actually really, really cool. So overall, I like this game. What I like about it is that it's a small game, small footprint, so easy to travel with. Because I'm thinking this, this is what I'm thinking, and as you all are trying to decide whether you want to back it or not, I'm always thinking when I'm trying to, when I'm trying to decide whether to back a game or not, does it fit a niche, uh, uh, some kind of niche or something in my in my collection? Or is it going to be a game that I get excited about, I back, and then a few months later, I don't really play anymore? Um, here's why I would back it. This is, this is what I would be looking at. If you're looking for a game that you can travel with or has a small footprint that you could bring to the office or something like that that is very easy to teach that has thinkiness that has thinkiness and so i will say that this could be a negative for some folks and like i said i mentioned the the market manipulation could be negative it's not for me but it could be um but there's some really a lot of there's a lot of decisions that you're making in this game. When my wife and I sat down to play it the first time, we kind of took a breather and went, "Whoa, there's a lot to decide because you have five different things to your scoring, and uh, you know you're trying to decide what to play to which one you're going to pick up and all that stuff." And I think that if you just take a breath and don't get overwhelmed, go for you know a, a two or three of those strategies or in-game scorings primarily, um, then it doesn't feel overwhelming. But it could feel overwhelming to a lot of people. Um, it really could. But I like that about the game. That's where I think that um, it could have a place in my collection because it's a travel game. I've got a lot of travel games that are simple to teach and aren't super deep. I don't have a lot that are small, simple to teach, that are actually have some pretty decent thinkiness to it. And that's what I that's what I like about um, this game for sure. Now, I would also like to see more of those in-game scoring cards come out um, because the, the five that come with the base game, I, I think we need more, it needs more variability. And I think they're gonna address that in the Kickstarter, um, but we'll just, we'll wait and see uh, what happens there. And if they do, awesome because i think more variety with those cards would be huge and really 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 fun so anyways those are my thoughts on the gameplay i guess we'll go back to dean all right so that's going to do it with our thoughts for great barrier reef if you like filler games that have a little bit more puzzliness to them a little more meat to them than uh, maybe your average filler out there i definitely recommend checking this one out and if you are interested in in this video if the kickstarter is still going on we'll have the link below and so definitely check that out while it's still going on and until next time thanks for coming down to meeple town thanks for joining us and be sure to follow us on twitter at meeple town games and connect with us on the Meeple Town Guild, guild number 3407, at boardgamegeek.com. And also subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel. And until next time, thanks for coming down to Meeple Town.